Comic lovers rejoice. As you all know, Soda City Comic Con is happening this weekend here in Columbia, South Carolina. And joining me now, two of the voice actors that you all are going to want to hear, Adrian Huff and Lenore Zane. Hey. Hello. 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 Sugar. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much for joining us on this Zoom. We all know that you all are in a different time zone. So I, I apologize if I'm interfering into your sleep schedule right now. <laughs> Adrian and Lenora, you, you all play brother and sister, Nightcrawler and Rogue. So Adrian, I'll start off with you. Take me back to the time where you got the phone call or so that X-Men 97 was in the works. Well, I, I'll, I'll take you back a little further. And uh, I tell this story sometimes at, at the conventions is that um, my, I was wanted to be up for a big voice mo voiceover movie. And I told my voice agent, said, could you just tell him I was a Nightcrawler in X-Men, in X-Men. And he goes, nobody cares about a 25 year old cartoon. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like, well, <laughs> OK. And uh, anyway, so two years ago, then I got this almost sheepish email from him saying Adrian might recognize these lines and we actually had to audition for our parts again I think just to make sure that we could still get the tones that we had then and and uh and so I just I just laid down the Nightcrawler lines from the Nightcrawler crawler episode from the 90s again and next thing I knew deal came through and I'm in a studio this time all alone not with Lenore and Cal next to me, so. Ah, Lenore, yeah. Rogue. So what was that process like for you when you were initially um, presented with the idea of coming on again? Well, you know, uh, Sugar, it was amazing. <laughs> I <laughs> um, love you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, five years ago, uh, I was invited to a Comic-Con, and it was my first one that I'd ever attended as a guest. And uh, we met Larry Houston and Eric and Julia Leewald for the very first time. Um, Cal Dodd was there with me and Chris Potter and a few others. And we, um, we all got along so well. And at the very end of it, we had a dinner and we all said, wouldn't it be nice if someone bought the rights to the show and brought us all back and, you know, rebooted oh. the series. And we said, well, let's put that out there to the universe. And we did a toast and we said, okay, universe here, this is where we're putting it out there. And then five years later, here we are. So when I got the call to say, yes, Lenore, the producers now want to meet you. I had to also audition like Adrian and I, I just, did my rogue voice. And uh, then I got the call saying the producers want to meet you on Zoom. They were in LA. I was in Nova Scotia, east coast of Canada. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I, as soon as I got on with Bo DeMeo and, and Charlie Feldman, who were then the acting producers and were hands on, they said, oh my God, Lenore, like we, we can't keep this up any longer. We are huge fans would you come back because we would love to we're going to reboot the series and we want you to come back so it was like this incredible dream come true mm -hmm. and speaking of dream come true both of you all a brother and sister we know that your mom is crazy mystique <laughs> all right how mm -hmm. tell us as you were reading the script to see that you would be able to be with your brother what was that like to know that nightcrawler would be with you I'm thrilled that the fans get to see not only Nightcrawler in more detail, and they will continue to, but also um, the, fa the, the sibling relationship, which is incredibly beautiful. Adrian, one of the episodes where Nightcrawler, we could see him being very um, vocal, was when you all went to Genosha the first time. <laughs> And That's you when he first to, appears, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Went to Genosha and he, um, so take us through that episode with you and Rogue making sure, although you were bouncing up and down the place, That's right, yeah. to make sure everybody knew who you were. <laughs> well, that was the first, that was obviously the first episode that he appears in, and that I got to record this session. And so there's a little bit of nerves and everything. Okay, can I, can I get this back into gear? And, um, 
So that f the first line, he says, meine Freunde, um, and, uh, and then, uh, oh, you Americans, so theatrical, I blame soap operas. And uh, so I read I hear that. It, I hear it. <laughs> right? And so I read that first line, my first time through that line, I just read it all as one kind of speech. Okay. And then the Meredith Lane, the, the casting director and, and the voice director, she, she goes, oh, Adrian, so this is what's happening. He's bamfing in and out of the scene. So I went, oh, and so then I kept like, woohoo, my new friend. And like suddenly that sound came out and then I, and over here, you know, so, so that's, I mean, it was super fun. And I love that he gets to be playful right at the start before the other stuff happens. And, and then we're back into a, <laughs> different <laughs> exactly. oh, gambler has a tell you know Lenore, <laughs> okay the episode a lot of people were not expecting you and magneto had a thing going on okay so what was that like when you had to come together and gambit was right there ah uh, well when i read the script i thought a lot of Romy fans are going to be very unhappy. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's funny, you know, because the internet is, is a blessing and a curse. And I had heard about how other actors had sometimes been, you know, attacked by fans for stuff that their character has done in right. movies or TV or something. <laughs> And I was like, geez, I hope they don't come after me going, what are you doing, doing this thing to, to Remy, you know? Um, and I was a little nervous about it because I really wondered if people would be mad at me. And, you know, I I talked to the the writers and the producers and they said, well, it's in the comics. And I hadn't known that. Right. Mm -hmm. That it is in the comics and it is in the canon that, Rogue during this her Savage Land years, you know, got together with Magneto, and in fact, in apparently in another universe, um, an alternate universe, they even have a child together who they named Charles after Charles Xavier, yeah. right? So uh, I just had to hope, I just had to hope that that you know the fans would would understand it's a story. So um, I mean, I made it pretty clear on social media when that episode dropped and um, I said, you know, it's a story, let it play out. But to be honest, as an actor, it's great because it's lots of fun to play, you know, these, these seductive scenes and um, to have another side to Rogue be seen that hasn't been seen before. Yeah, you're right. Cause in the cartoons, you know, well, not cartoon, but X-Men animation, when I was younger, Rogue was just like, you know, uh, you know, obviously very strong and and yeah. in love with Remy. So you never yeah. in my mind, I was like, there's no other dude but Remy with Rogue, you know. So that's what happened. Right. Um so, uh, so and I, do, and I, do, mm -hmm. I was just gonna say one thing. I do believe he's her soulmate. So when she wow. loses him, once she realizes no, you know, when she says some things are deeper than skin. She repeats what he had told her when, when she finally gets together with Magneto later on. And then she says, no, you know, some things are deeper than skin. She realizes he, he's her soulmate. Yeah. So that's why it's so heartbreaking when she loses him. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I cried at the end of that episode, even though I'd read the thing, you know, I was just like, it just got me the, this incredible. Adrian, what episode stands out the most for you this uh, past season? The f there's a, a fight scene where uh, um, uh, Wolverine and Nightcrawler team up, and I think I think it's episode seven. Oh um, yeah, he goes into like that portal with him or the teleportation. I, exactly. So yeah. I was I had to go back and re-record some vo vocal stuff. Like there's like some heavy breathing when the two like grunts as like, he hits the wall and and then. <sighs> And I had to go back and re-record some of that stuff. And so we have to do it to the animation. Normally it's we go first and then they animate. And but then you go back and they add some animation that you have to make right. sounds for. And and I was watching this, I was thinking, oh my god, this is this is beautiful. Because the whole teleportation thing, we've never seen what that's like from the point of view of doing it. 
And that, it's just opened up a whole world in my mind about what makes Nightcrawler tick. Mm. Lenore, what about you? Well, <clears throat> I have two favorites from, okay. from my character. And that would be episode five, Remember It, mm -hmm. and um, episode seven, Bright Eyes. Gotcha. His name was Gambit. Remember, Remember it. it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, and, and episode five, because mm -hmm. of all the huge emotional arc that mm -hmm. Rogue goes through. I mean, uh, it's a gift for an actor. Yeah, to be able it's to a go deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, to get a script like that where you know that your character's going through the ringer and you have to be able to produce that, but only using your voice. You, you can't use your face, you can't yeah. use your, your physical mannerisms, only the voice. And that's where the technique and the beauty of being able to do voice acting comes into play. Not everybody can do it. It is, it takes a certain amount of skill. So it was a real gift to be able to to do that with that episode. Wow. Everybody is waiting for the next season, to be honest, including me, myself. Uh, what can we expect in this next season? I know you will obviously, no spoilers, but what can we expect in this season, Adrian? <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot say anything because, you know, we've all signed these NDAs, but I will say, Hang on to your hats. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right, Lenora, I know you have an NDA to anything you can tell us. <laughs> I would just say <clears throat> Rogue is on what I call the hero's journey. And the hero's journey is one where um, a person or a character goes through the deep dark forest and all its dangers has to face all of the dangers and the challenges um to find the precious jewel or gem or chalice or whatever it is that they're searching for so lenore with you anything you'd like to tell the columbia south carolina a comic-con lovers the people that are getting ready to come see you all this weekend well first of all i gotta say I'm so excited to come. I've never been to South Carolina, so I'm thrilled. And thank you to the Comic-Con for bringing us. Uh, I'm, I can't wait to meet everybody and hear their own personal stories about what the show has meant to them as kids and now. And to meet the kids, the, the children that are the next generation of fans. I'm really looking forward to meeting everybody and uh yeah so just come on down and and meet us bring your favorite toys and comic books and we've got prints and things like this to sign and i just can't wait i'm excited i'm excited adrian absolutely i'm i'm so looking forward to meeting the people in south carolina i have never been there either so this is our okay. both of our first trip and so as that was a night call a gesture um uh and uh, i'm super excited to meet all, all the fans as well and uh uh, it, it, it's it's always so heartwarming for us, especially this time around, because the first time we didn't know how popular the show was. There was no, there was no internet. There was no social media. We just sort of went, recorded in the studios, and went out and had fun, and came back, and that was it. So it's amazing to to be able to have all this contact with people who are moved and are enjoying the show. Yeah. And before. And before we go, uh, Lenore, then Adrian, I asked you the same thing. Le Lenore, can you say anything in your rogue voice for our viewers? Well, you know, Sugar, you look about as nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> and also, I want to tell them to keep an eye out. I have a memoir coming out in, uh, in like October called a rogue's tale so if anyone's interested in my origin story and the whole trip through the x-men experience check it out you can get it on um uh on, it'll be available on amazon amazon you can you can check it out there in october okay perfect perfect and adrian mr nightcrawler oh there are so many good quotes from kurt wagner i think the one i get asked about a lot is this one there is no love without sin, but love is best measured by what we forgive. 
Oh, beautiful. And Adrian up at Lenore Zay. Thank you all so much for um, taking the time to talk with us. Seriously, we really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you all on Saturday because I will be there. Stay up to date with this story and more. Subscribe to our Watch Fox YouTube page. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell to never miss an update.